here in Hokkaido once again. If I look dead, it's because I am dead, because I'm cheap, which is the point of this video. I'm gonna tell you guys how I travel around Japan domestically for super, super cheap. For example, that flight that I was just on from Tokyo to here in Sapporo, I actually booked a round trip flight for only 4,400 yen, so less than 40 US dollars. I feel like I've gotten pretty good at traveling on a budget, so I'm gonna take you guys with me just generally um, around my Hokkaido trip. Peach Airlines, the airlines that I was on, it's a low cost domestic, well, they, they have dem uh, international flights too, but I've only used them domestically. Low cost carrier in Japan, they often have sales. So if you sign up for their emails, sign up for their uh, like line account, messages you can get really good deals so that's how I secured like a $20 ticket here and a $20 ticket back I actually am on a budget like a pretty strict budget I'm gonna be heading to Asahikawa which is up north a little bit we're gonna be seeing some really awesome fall leaves I think because um it is starting to be mid-October and I'm gonna be here for a week so hopefully I'll see some of the leaves as they're changing and I'm gonna try and do my best to do as many things that I can that are free. A lot of things that are just nature. Um, there's a bug on my camera. Uh, for now, I'm gonna keep airplane watching. It is very cold here and my glasses are all fogging up. So I encourage you, if you ever come to Japan, um, try to look into taking buses if you have time. Like, a lot of the times the trains, especially the Shinkansen or the bullet trains, can be like just hundreds of dollars, like US dollars, right? But taking the bus, I took the bus from Sapporo to here in Asahikawa. If I would have taken the train, it would have cost double that. And it really, I mean, it does add more time onto the trip. And I feel like when people are visiting Japan, time is everything. And so they might be willing to pay more money to get to places faster and more conveniently. I mean, if you're really wanting to visit Japan on a budget, <laughs> like you have no money, you buy your plane ticket and then you're broke. I, I You can definitely do an amazing trip here um, if you budget it correctly, you know? I'll put some links in the description for buses that I use. I've used Wheeler, uh, Chuo bus, like t tons of different buses and uh, a lot of different websites you can use for booking buses. And uh, I think it's very worth your time to compare the prices of the buses to the prices of the trains for your destination. Anyway, I'm gonna meet up with my friend here in Asikawa. We're gonna go grocery shopping because we're being cheap again. I know that people um, who are coming to Japan, you know, you're gonna wanna try the food if you're here on a temporary visitor visa, so I get that. But if you're here for like an extended amount of time, uh, I, think, I think honestly it's a cultural experience within itself to go grocery shopping here and maybe like cook for yourself. Maybe you rented a Airbnb that has a kitchen or your hotel has a kitchen or something. I think the food that you can make in Japan with the groceries that you can get uh, is sometimes just as good as eating out too. So if you wanna save money on an extended trip, uh, yeah, cooking is the way to go and uh, I have done that when I go on trips sometimes is I'll just uh, stay at a capsule hotel that has a kitchen and they usually just like let you cook there. <laughs> Remember, this video is the cheapest way to travel in Japan, not the most fun way. <laughs> Good morning guys from Asahikawa City. This is one of Japan's most like northern cities that's big enough. There's other cities like uh, Wakanai is a fairly big town, city that's like further up north, but I think this is what people think of when they think of Japan's most northern city. Uh, I'm actually headed to the park. Going to parks is just a really nice way to, am I going the right way? Uh, uh, no, I'm not. Walking around the city and going to parks and just being in nature, honestly, costs nothing. Um, and it's a really good way to kind of get into everyday life here in Japan, not like doing a whole bunch of uh, like touristy things or museums, but kind of like checking out what daily life is like for people that live here and just, I, I like to people watch, not gonna lie. I actually have leftovers at my friend's place for lunch. They're leftovers from dinner, so I won't be buying a big 
thing for lunch today, but the reason why I'm doing that is so that I can go all out and spend a lot of money when I go to Sapporo, the capital of Hokkaido, because um, we we're going to meet up with some friends there and uh, I want to be able to meet, I want to be able to eat whatever I want. Yeah, just when things aren't too exciting, I just kind of um, eat cheap and then I can go all out later, you know? So I hope this is the right way to the park. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention I actually bought this at Sapporo Chitose Airport. It's a Pikachu as a pilot for CTS, um, which is the code for Sapporo Chitose Airport. And I really wanted this. You cannot get this even at the uh, Sapporo Pokemon Center. You can only get it at the uh, Chitose Airport. So I knew that I wasn't going to be back there because I'm flying out of a different airport. So I really wanted to pick this up. It's so cute. I'm just going to let it dangle on my bag. My goodness, the trees here have already changed. Or they're starting to really change. This is what I wanted. <laughs> this is why I came to Hokkaido during this time of year. It's the middle of October, so it's about to be peak. We love maps here. Let's check out the map. Oh, there's a shrine here, Kamikawa Shrine Tongu. boat riding over here. I did not know they had boat riding. I wish I could get closer to the ducks. I think those are mallard ducks is what you call them. Oh, they're so cute. They be quacking <laughs> and flapping. See, that's the thing about Japan. Nothing beats just walking around because you just never know what really cool areas you're gonna find. It's a very clean park too. There's a turtle. Look at him. He's looking right up at me. I think the shrine is over there. We'll go there next. See out here in smaller cities, like not in Kyoto and the heart of Tokyo and stuff, a lot of shrines like this are totally free to go into. I know that in Kyoto they'll like charge for a lot of things, but totally free to go to ones like this. See, you can have such a peaceful shrine experience without a million people. I'm back downtown. I'm gonna grab a snack. I'm gonna show you guys my favorite snack to get in Hokkaido and I can only get it in Hokkaido. This is it, Hokkaido potato. <laughs> These are just so good. And it's only 160 yen. Yummy. They're just so good. I can't explain it. Just the potatoes here are good. They're seasoned really good. I know it's just french fries at the end of the day. It's not just french fries, it's Hokkaido potato. Also, another thing, a small budget thing, is the uh, drinks at a convenience store are usually gonna be cheaper than if you get them in a vending machine. I know that vending machines are like a really big thing here and some of the novelty is just like getting a drink out of the, the vending machine or whatever, but because there's so many options, there's so many vending machines everywhere. It's like famous in Japan, right? The vending machines. Uh, but if there's a vending machine and then there's a convenience store close by and the drink you want is probably gonna be in the convenience store, it's gonna be way cheaper. So a lot of water bottles can be like 130, sometimes even 150 yen. 90 yen. 90 yen for one of these. I know you're only maybe saving like 50 yen, but that can add up really quick, especially if you're here for two weeks and you get water all the time, you need to stay hydrated. You could save a good amount of money, actually. It'll add up just by getting a convenience store drink versus getting in the vending machine all the time. And, I mean, hey, that's an extra thing that you can buy. Maybe a little extra, even if it's just 500 yen. 500 yen. 500 yen can get you a lot of things in Japan, so keep that in mind. I mean, you could say that I'm a penny pincher, but I mean, I'm able to travel around because I'm a penny pincher. 
Sapporo time, dude. Yeah, just having a nice weekend out in Sapporo. That's my boy. They have the Hisui and stuff finally. Very cool. Saw these at the Sapporo Chitose one. Uh, I still wish they made bigger ones. They are. Uh, maybe during winter I'll get one of these, but. I love these wall scroll, or not wall scrolls, but like cloth. Yeah. Things you just hang them up. The design is so cool. Yeah, these are so cool. I really like these plates. Everything about the Arceus game is like such a good aesthetic for merch. It's Hokkaido. Hokkaido's the best. For real. Oh my gosh. He's so big and cuddly. my capsule hotel for the night. This cost me about 1,400 yen. So with the current exchange rate, about 10 US dollars actually to stay here. It's big enough for someone who is five foot five or 168 centimeters. And I think people who are taller than me will totally be fine in capsule hotels like this too. There's plenty of lighting. There's a extra flashlight. There's a place to plug in your phone or any electronic devices that you might need. There's also a reading light lamp in this one, which I hadn't really seen a reading lamp in capsule hotels before this. A really good deal for what I got. This is my final night in Hokkaido. My final night in Asahikawa as well. I have yet to try Asahikawa ramen. Hokkaido is pretty famous for having really good ramen and not a big ramen person. Not the biggest ramen connoisseur, but I've, you know, tried Sendai ramen, Miyagi ramen. I've had ramen in Osaka, Kyoto area, obviously the Tokyo, Kanto region area, and Hokkaido just kills it. Hokkaido, I could sit here and actually eat ramen. I actually don't eat ramen that much, even though I've lived in Japan for almost five years. I really just don't it's a very heavy meal. I could probably count in two hands the amount of times I've been to a ramen shop in Japan. But uh, because I know that Hokkaido ramen is so good, I've had it before in Sapporo. Asikawa is also known for having some uh, famous ramen, so apparently their shoyu ramen, or their soy sauce ramen, is pretty good, so... Uh, I actually don't know where I'm going. This is it. It was early in the morning here in Asahikawa. This is my last day in Hokkaido. Had some awesome ramen last night. Feeling good, but I am about to get on a bus for three hours on the way to the city of Kitami in kind of northeastern Hokkaido. Very much a less populous area of Hokkaido. I've never been anywhere near there before, so I'm excited to see uh, what it's like.
honestly one of those beautiful bus rides I've ever been on in Japan. Fall leaves are peak right now in Hokkaido and then we kind of went up into the Asahidake mountain area and I thought originally we were gonna go on the expressway which goes around the mountains but um, turns out we went through the mountains um, and stopped at every little onsen village on the way so the sightseeing phenomenal. It's cool that there's already snow up there too. I mean it is Hokkaido. We're pretty far up north. Um, it's middle of October so I guess no surprise that there's already snow on the ground around here. Now uh, I'm in Kitami which I won't be staying in very long unfortunately because I have flights to catch in a few hours um, from Menmanbetsu airport. Kitami is probably best known for its curling. If you watched the Olympics this past year, the Tokyo Olympics, the Japanese team and of course the Russian team I think got pretty far and so the Japanese team, I think pretty much all the girls on that team are actually from Kitami and like if you look at famous people from Kitami it's like all curlers. <laughs> I made it to Memmanbetsu Airport. This is the smallest airport, not only in Japan, but I think that I've ever flown out of. Well, I guess we started the trip at an airport observation deck, and I guess we'll end the trip around this observation deck. There's three terminals from what I can see. The reason why I booked this airport was because it was actually cheaper to book this airport and even though the bus to support Chitosa airport, the airport that I flew into, uh, was cheaper because the flight ticket was cheaper out of this airport. It actually made everything else cheaper. Like the bus ticket from Asahikawa to here was more expensive than Asahikawa to support Chitose, but I did save money uh, by booking a flight out of here. So, and honestly, so worth it. Like I totally recommend uh, you know, even if you only, I think I only saved maybe a thousand, two thousand yen maybe? Two thousand, three thousand yen, not that much, but it ended up being really worth it because I get to explore a new area of Japan, I get to fly out of a different airport, um, that bus ride was awesome, I get to try some different food. I'm, I'm really happy with the, the decision I made to come out all this way to this middle of nowhere airport, you know? Well, there you have it, guys. This is how I personally travel around Japan domestically when I'm on a budget. So between choosing cheaper buses over trains, choosing to book at a capsule hotel instead of a regular hotel, getting cheap konbini food, and getting good sales on plane tickets. I'm able to save a lot of money when I travel domestically in Japan. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer any you might have in the comments. And thank you so much for watching.